Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Flying Ross here. First and foremost, I would like to st start out this video with saying a big thank you to everyone that has recently subscribed to the channel and then also the people that have been here for a while. I've just passed over 500 subscribers and it's constantly growing. It means so much to me that you guys actually are enjoying the videos and it actually being a good enough quality with good information that everyone is actually watching the videos. So from the bottom of my heart to all of you, thank you very much. Now, this is going to be a video on everything mass transit, from buses to subways to editing lines to changing the colors, trains, everything possible that I can jam pack in here in the, as fast as possible too. I don't want to make a long ass video, but we're going to try to put everything into it. So let's get to it. So one thing I've seen on the forums that everyone is asking, or not everyone, but a lot of people are asking, is actually how do you edit the lines? This though, so you get the different colors so you know which buses are going where and which trains are going where. Now there's two different ways to do this. Now the first way is that we zoom on those buses, you actually can click on the bus, hit modify line. Now you can change not only the color, so I can make this a nice hot purple, and also you can call it, you know, the hot pink, right, that's hot pink. Hot pink line. You can call it everything you want, but also this, so this helps you to understand where everyone's going. Now, also about changing the lines, the second way how you do it is once we get out of here, um, we can go into the uh, transport overlay. And now this is how you edit subway lines. So here is a subway line and you can just click on it and then you can either delete the line, you can edit the line color, and then also the, met, uh, the, um, the line name. Now this is really important, so when you get into your, like this is my pen station, you can get into your pen station, all the different colors represent all the different lines, where your citizens are going, which lines that they're actually using, which ones are being productive, and which ones are not. Based off of this really colorful infographic right here, we can determine that the orange and the purple and blue lines are doing fairly well. The yellow line, not so much, there's not that many people waiting on the yellow line. So it might be something that I should look into. Now, this is just very important on the grand scheme of things is all your different bus lines and all your different subway lines, you can go and look where the passengers are going and what they're using. So here is a bus stop right here, which has red, pink, and green people waiting for the next bus. And if we come over here, we have um, purples and, or light blues and pinks. So this just is a really good technique of helping understand where your people are going and what lines they're using. And then also if you need to delete a line, or if you notice right here, I have a line that's using this bus stop, I can click and now, well, I could click if I had the right thing, I can click and now drag this one very specific line over. As well as if I want this line deleted, I can now delete the line easily with transport overlay. I can click and then hit delete. So. On to the next subject. The next subject is how to lay out your bus lines. Now this is specifically to bus lines, but we're gonna go over every single one you know, from every single type of transportation. Now bus lines should be a pretty much straight path down one avenue or down one street and then back again. As you can see here, I have bus stops on either side. Now these bus stops are in line with my subway so my buses can transport citizens from further out in the city down to the central of the city and then get them on the subway so then the subway system can transport them further down the city. And when they get off that bus stop, they can leave, or at that subway station, they can get out, go to the next bus stop and get another bus. So you want your the network kind of intertwined. Now things that you don't want to do is you don't want to make a large circle. You don't want to just make a whole bunch of spamming uh, lines all the way around your sur sur or city and just keep on spamming it around because that's just not going to be efficient. You want to make multiple separate lines and as you can see here this is my turnaround line. So I'm turning around and then going back down my street so we have both on left and right so north and south or east and west whatever it is but people want to go travel both sides. Now to make this effective you want to put them at street corners so your citizens can cross the street and determine which side they want to be on. So we can see right here that this line is coming in. So right now there's not too many people waiting for this direction, but there's a shit ton of people waiting for this. Now, if we just had this as a large circle, they might not all use that and they might be on the roads. Now, 
this is really effective right here as you can see this is right next to my high school okay so my high school now has all these citizens here waiting for different buses because they're going to different areas of the city okay so we can actually say okay well we don't want this we want them to stop there too pick them up oh we want him to pick up uh, people there as well so we can add to these bus stations so that there are multiple bus stations crossing each other so if you want to switch lines that you can now all these lines are going into a central location and they all feed into my Penn Station. So hold on, let me find my Penn Station. Oh, here it is. So here's my Penn Station and not all my bus lines stop here, but they all crisscross each other so that you could in theory hop from one bus to another bus and you were either gonna get to a subway station, a rail station, or you're gonna get to the, uh, the, the actual Penn Station. And this is just something that you want to keep in mind is that you wanna separate all your lines. You don't want one massive line. You wanna keep them nice and short, both for your subways and for your buses, but it's now specifically buses. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be a straight line. As you can see here, this one curves around this little suburban area, but it turns back around. So on the westward direction, as it goes, it stops at this subway station. It turns around, picks up people again through here, and then drops it at this subway station. So now you're sw using one bus line to transport people in a larger area to two different subway stations so they can use the subway stations to get somewhere else. So next, let's talk about subways. So subways, here's my Grand Central Station, 2,400 people have used it last week, and I call that fairly well. For a city population of 7,000, eh, maybe not, we could always get more, but we're doing pretty well here. I have about 5,600 of citizens and another 650 tourists using it every single week. Not too shabby. Now first, we're talking about... Um, we have our buses, they're doing 3,100, and our subways are doing 2,400. Now, what you want to do, though, is with your subways, is I highly recommend making a Grand Central Station. And so, or a Penn Station, or whatever, your depot area. So everyone is kind of funneled into one central area. Now, this right here, it, you need to have a lot of different tunnels. Now, you're like, oh my gosh, Ross, that's a lot of stupid tunnels. You don't need all of them. Well, the problem with the subways is that they'll get backed up, and there's only in and out of the subway station. So... What happens is that they get backed up, as you can see here. Now, if you get multiple trains backed up, it'll clog it up to the point where trains can't enter and exit the subway station. So the other subway stations that are further out, you don't necessarily need to have all the tubes because you only have one train actually servicing the area. But when you have a depot, you need to have multiple different curves and multiple different entrances and exits so that trains can wait and then also exit without clogging each things up. So as you can see, this train is entering the station now, and this train is w waiting for that one, and so forth and so on. So trains are coming in and out, and then either circling in and out as well. Now, if you do not get this right, what will happen is the trains will back out, uh, back out or, or yeah, you know, go so far out. So even look here. I have a green train all the way out here, a yellow train. So it's already jamming in here and I have a pretty good system set up. But if we speed this up, you can see that eventually it's gonna clear itself out. Um, now your subway lines, just like your bus lines, should be going north and south or east and west and stopping at the same stops uh, on both directions. So if we can, sorry I spin there, but we're gonna go here. My gosh, look at all of my abandoned buildings. So here's my orange line. Okay, now my orange line is being fed by a bus station. Um, and it starts down here on the edge of my city. Now it goes to here and then it goes to this little depot here. Now this is one of my depots. Um, it's has three different lines coming into it because the three different lines go, go of course in three different directions. I have an express route to the, my, my, um, depot. I have one to my train or my, uh, not, not my train. Well, well, yeah, train. And then also, uh, my airport, which later on will become more effective. And then I have my central line that goes down. Now you can see it's stopping a uh, back and forth. So this is basically just one long straight line from one depot to the next and then back again. And that's how you want your subway set up. And here's my express one that stops at one stop and then goes straight into the depot. Now I have smaller lines, but they're all servicing usually about two to three different subway stations and maybe a little bit more. 
As you can see in here, the, I kind of screwed up this one because it's only stopping in one direction and then going on to another direction and it's not stopping in both way, uh, to and from. So it's not necessarily a good setup. Now here's a decent setup. Here the, the orange is really liking this because it's going in and out. It's stopping at different locations back and forth. And then it's going into the center of the city and dropping them off in there. So it's just something to keep in mind that you don't want a circle and you don't need to spam multiple different stops for your subways or your bus lines. You want to keep your subways really spaced out and use your buses to funnel people into your subways. So on to uh, the connecting everything else together as well. So train stations and harbors. Now train station harbors, harbors get really, you know, they're really meant for get tourists in. Trains can get tourists in, but then also can, you know, transport your citizens from one side of the city to another. Now a greater distance than subways. So the trains can carry 240 people and I have this one side of the city here and then I have one all on the opposite side of the city here. Gosh, those little abandoned buildings kind of piss me off. <laughs> so. And then also I have one at the airport. Now all these services right now are not functioning at capacity because one, I don't have that large of a city. It's only 70,000 people, so not many people are gonna be using this different services. If you can think about a city near you, then you might not have a train that only services your 70,000 people. You know, I grew up in a town in, in New Jersey in the United States, and my town had easily way, way over 70,000 people, and we didn't have our own train system. We had a train system that kind of covered the entire state or the northern section, of the, but we didn't have a dedicated train train system, uh, system for just 70,000 people. So something to keep in mind. And it's the same thing with the subways. Subways will grow exponentially uh, more efficient as you have more people ride them. Um, now the harbors, they bring in people and you wanna have everything connected. So here is our harbor and then here's my subway and I have a bus stop and I have a train station. So effectively, I'm connecting every single mass transit together because my train station goes to the airport, my subway goes to the airport, my subway goes to my Penn station and so forth and so on. So everything is mass connected. So what happens next is you really have to set up your lines and then you have to control the budget. So we'll get into that for the last part. So the last part is controlling your budget. And this is really gets kind of like, you know, difficult. Right here we go into our budget and we can see I have my subway at 60% and I have my bus lines at 100% and I have the other three down at 50%. So right now I'm spending 32,000 <laughs> weekly on mass transit. But look at this, I'm only spending 729 for buses and I'm making 3,600. That is a pretty good return on my investment. The same with my subways. I'm spending 5,800, right now it's at 6,200 and it's fluctuating up and down. That's okay, it's gonna do that. And if, if you look at my trains and my boats and my airport, well, I mean, the closest one is my boats. It's at 50% of what I spend versus what I make and my trains is nowhere close. I'm even at 50%, I'm spending 6,000 on trains, but that's also including your cargo terminals. So it's not just your um, your actual passenger trains, it's also your cargo. Um, it does come into that, that money. So just to kind of think about that, it does play into the part. So what you wanna do though is like, okay, right now I have, th I'm making 3,200 on, uh, on my bus line and I'm spending 729, so I'm at 100% right now. So what I wanna do is that you only need one bus depot. Oh gosh, it must be the end of the day for garbage collection, or the beginning. So you only need one bus depot. Now I'm using 120 buses. So what you wanna do is you wanna change these increments by 10% and 10% only because it's gonna throw so many buses onto your line that if you do it more than 10%, oh, what the hell happened here? I have a traffic backup. Um, it's gonna uh, throw so much onto your uh, line that you're just gonna have them all following each other and that's not necessarily effective. So we're gonna increase this by 10% and then we'll put this into fast motion and you can see the buses come out and you're gonna see that the, you know one for basically each different line and then maybe sometimes two depending on the line length. So you're gonna get two more buses. Now if we did this, okay, so that line got a whole bunch of more buses. But if we did this where uh, we just increased it to a whole shit ton, the buses would have come out to such an extent that it would have made it almost useless. 
Uh, so you don't want to do that. And I got to really find out why is this backing up so much. But we'll get to that in a different episode. So you want to make sure that now we have 134 buses on and we're going to let that settle in, you know, let the network actually, you know, get used to it. And then also so the demand actually increases as well. So the same thing goes with your subways. Um, now the subways, they will just add trains in, uh, by themselves. They're not going to necessarily have the trains, you know, from a depot. So you can see that my trains are kind of getting backed up here. And still, even with all my nice, lovely circles, it's getting backed up, but it's flowing. It's flowing, and that's what we care about, as long as it keeps on flowing. So what we want to do as well is that we now have, we're spending 5,800, and we're making 5,900. So we know that we're kind of right there, but let's increase it by 10%. Oh, 10. And really, you want to increase it slowly. You don't want to dramatically increase your expenditures. So increase it slowly, and then your system will get used to it and understand that the demand is there, or the not the supply is there, and so the demand can actually increase. Because if we look in here and we actually go into our transportation uh, tab, we can see that there's a shit ton of people waiting here. We had Orange Line just come in and out twice, and we have Blue Line just sitting here with a lot of people waiting. So as we increase the trains, the, the citizens, the simulation as well, will recognize that there's more supply so they can increase the demand. Now, as we just had a blue train there, and we still have people waiting for the blue train. So that's why we just increased it. So I hope this kind of explains better in a very short amount of time and precise as well about mass transit. Now, the cargo lines and the cargo trains, basically really short and simple. You want your cargo lines and your cargo trains really close to each other so that they kind of intertwine. Now, I really don't have a large industry right now because uh, I don't have actually really anything produced. I have somewhat, um, but I'm trying to keep it down for pollution. And, and so it's I'm really basically importing everything. So you're not gonna see any kind of trains come in and actually leave, they're all gonna drop. Now you wanna try to keep your passenger trains off, but you see passenger trains here, but this is actually just from the outside of the map. So this isn't my passenger train. So my cargo trains, they only share a line here just so they can get out. But here is my only passenger train, and there, this one has a whole nine people on. What do you do? <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please hit the thumbs up if you did. And again, once again, I'm going to end the video with saying a big thank you to all the new subscribers and the people that have been here for the past two years of me making videos. Even bigger thank you. And uh, it's not that I'm just going to stop War Thunder content at all. I'm going to definitely continue that. But I, I definitely am enjoying this game. And I hope that I can help you all enjoy the City Skylines game. And as always, I'm Flying Ross. I'll check you guys later.